Welcome to the MTR Network. We are back for another Supergirl Super Tuesday. I am Shanna, and I'm here with the doctor. Good evening. And we are here to discuss Supergirl Season 3, Episode 3, Far From the Tree, uh, which we both decided is a horrible title, despite the fact that we know what they were going for. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Just a little bit of a letdown after Girl of Steel and Triggers. So, um, what did you think of this episode? I liked it. Um, the fight was a little anticlimactic in the end, but the overall episode was really, really well done. Yeah. Um, I, I was oh, here also, for the black thing. Here for I was just, and how awesome is it? Because I love Carl Lumbly. I love him and his wife and everything <sighs> they do. I also love the fact that he is the voice of... John Jones, Martian Manhunter on Justice League Unlimited. So to have him playing John Jones' father, it was just, I love the uh, the homage. Okay, I did not know that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit of a name dropper right now. Um, I have always been a fan of Carl Lumley, but in particular, um, a friend of mine, uh, David, he when like this is back when he was doing theater when he still lived in San Francisco I used to go to pretty much every show that he did um you know like just supporting so like every show no matter what how big the theater no matter how tiny I was there and he did a (laughs) two-person play and it was just him and the other actor was Carl Lumley Okay. It was it, amazing. It was a play about these. I mean, it might have been a three person play because I think every once in a while there was like a lawyer character, but it was mainly just the two of them on stage for like an hour and a half. And it was a play about um, these two criminals, um, a young kid who like just got put in jail, and Carl Lumley was playing this guy who was in there for life. And they were both in solitary. And so the the play took place um, when they got like their hour outside every day. And that was when the two of them would interact. Um, so it was really it was really cool two person play. I love tiny plays like that where it's just like two to three people on stage the whole time. Um, mm-hmm. But I remember meeting him after that play and I was just like. Sir, you are one of the most amazing actors I've ever seen. And he was so sweet and so humble. And yeah, Carl Lumley has a special place in my heart. So when I heard his voice and then when, you know, they had him take on the human form, I screamed like it was <laughs> it was like 11 o'clock at night when I watched this and I was in my room screaming because it was just like. It's Carl Lumley. I can't believe they got Carl Lumley. <laughs> Carl Lumley is too good for this show. <laughs> oh my God, don't say that. Like, not even in a like, because I think it's bad way, but like, because I think Carl Lumley is too good for like 90% of the things they put him in because he's that amazing. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> um, yeah, so amazing. Ugh, yeah, the black thing. The black. Thing. <laughs> um, so it yeah, just they could have just called this episode "The Black Thing." That would have been great too. I mean, even fake Latinas acting. I was crying the whole episode. I'm yes. like, oh, God. I mean, other than the part, and I thought of you immediately. Other than the part where she calls her dad and she started off in Spanish. <laughs> Listen, and then if, if, <laughs> if we didn't know before that she was not really Spanish, that moment would have done it. <laughs> right. Hola, papi. Yo soy Margarita. <laughs> Why they do this? I was like, man, nobody told them to butcher the Spanish language like this. this is weird. Oh my god. Oh lord. Um, yeah. So the two major plots of this episode are. John and Supergirl heading to Mars because Magan at the end of last episode contacted him um, and said that she needs help on Mars. And then the B plot is Maggie and Alex having their engagement party and Maggie inviting her parents to come and her father shows up. Um, And at Alex's insistence or encouragement. Mm -hmm. Which I thought was 
lovely. Also, I I love actually. Okay, so we'll we'll start with them. What I really loved about this, and you know, we talked about this last week and the week before. I love how they are writing her off of this show because they are really building up her character. If this was any other season and I knew she wasn't going to leave, I would think they were totally building her up to kill her off. Because <laughs> that's how good it's been. <laughs> like They're giving her all of the character development. <laughs> um, and usually that's like the sign that somebody's about to die. Um, but the scene where she tells Alex's mom about how her parents got rid of her once they found out she was gay listen what kind of bullshit was that when she said that they packed her up and left her on her aunt's doorstep didn't tell her nothing except what did he say to her um you dishonored me not dishonored me you've shamed me yeah Ooh, that that got me. I'm not, like, I'm not even gonna lie. When she told that, I was like, first of all, when we start monologuing on Supergirl, <laughs> just full on monologuing. So she's just monologuing about everything. I just got, I you know, I got a little verklempt. I you know, somebody started cutting onions in the room. It was really well acted, <laughs> like. Again, then that next scene, she calls her dad and that horrible Spanish. But we'll let that go. <laughs> um, what did you think when her father showed up? Like, when he actually showed up? Listen, I was like, hey, boo. Uh- <laughs> he is very good looking. Hmm? He is very good looking. <sighs> it was interesting because he's, even though he kicked her out, and didn't talk to her, he's been tracking her. Mm-hmm. And it was one of those things where they set you up to think that, oh, this is going to be one of those happily ever after things. So when he dropped what he dropped, I'm like, yeah. oh. Because yeah. even if, at first I thought he was upset because, at first I thought he was upset because, yes, yeah, she was gay. And then I was like, oh, wait. It's because it's the white folks. Oh, my God. He's racist and homophobic. Oh, my God. Well, I think so. I'm a supergirl today. I don't think it's so much. It's, it's. He, no, I, I'm not yeah. saying that it is. I'm saying they start, the way he started talking, I thought that's where they yeah. were taking it. Yeah. Um, I They really set us up. I thought he was going to turn out or I thought it was going to turn out to be that it was the mom that he always wanted to keep in contact with her. But for some reason, the mom couldn't accept it. And he was like afraid to go against her mom. Cause when her mom didn't show up, I was like, maybe he's cool and he's got moved past it, but the mom hasn't. So I thought that's where they were going when you find out that he's been keeping track of her and all this other stuff. Um, but then when, I, will, I, yeah. I personally thought they were going to after school special it. This is Supergirl. <laughs> it is not above them to be like, oh, I was especially when he gives her the picture for their board. Mm-hmm. I, I was like, it is. I would not put his past Supergirl to go there. But not even just that. Uh, that he pulled the picture from his his wow. wallet and kissed it. Before mm-hmm. he put it on the board, they they really set us up. <laughs> it wasn't Girl, right because I was just like, "Oh, this is beautiful." They were finally there. She was all, you know, poppy this, and you know, he's all like, "Me ha that," and <laughs> I was trying to set up the video, but Google Chrome is, I mean, the CW app, the CW site, y'all, come on, y'all. I know y'all giving it to us for free, but come on. It's terrible. I, don't, I just don't even watch it. <laughs> I just don't even you use that it, app but anymore. the problem is, like, sometimes it won't load. It's like you want, you know. <laughs> I, was, I was really surprised when it turned out to be everything that it was and to find out that he still couldn't get past it. Because I went, just him showing up to me. I, I, and I was like, it wasn't like she asked you to come and she didn't tell you that she was getting married to a woman. 
She warned you. She warned him. <laughs> like you knew you were can't... stepping into. Did you think that they were not going to kiss or not going to hold hands around you? <laughs> I just, I don't know what he was expecting. <laughs> I don't either. I, I'm okay. It's acting right. I'm gonna see if I can't get the clip of why he was so frustrated. But yeah, it was. I mean, it was interesting. But backing up before we get to that showdown, <clears throat> I it, I did the one thing I did not like about this was Alex trying mm. to use a to show she completely misunderstood what Maggie was saying when Maggie said, "I don't want kids." She's mm-hmm. thinking Maggie doesn't want kids because of what happened to her as a child. I'm like, why would you think that? She's not turn around and treat her own child the way she was treated. So that can't be it. Maybe she's just one of those people who don't want kids. Well, I think that's the thing about it. Cause I've seen this with couples before on TV. Um, I think legit Alex never had the conversation with Maggie about why she didn't want to get his Maggie said she didn't want kids. And then Alex decided in her mind that, it was about Maggie's relationship with her parents. So then Mm -hmm. Alex decided that the fix, mind you, all of this without having a conversation with the woman she's about to get married to. So she decided Mm -hmm. that it was because of this reason. And then she decided that if she got Maggie past that reason, then Maggie would be okay with having kids. Yeah, no. (laughs) And it's and, 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 and it's completely wrong. It is totally and completely wrong. But I have seen that before, both on TV and I don't want to say like in real life, but I feel like I because not in this particular situation, but I've seen it with friends of mine in relationships where they've just they haven't had the conversation with their partner and they've decided that the reason their partner feels this way is because of X. And if they can fix X, then things will change. And then it turns out that it's not, that's not the reason at all. Because mm. the problem with it, the, the problem with it, though, was that, hold on, where is it? I think I'm there. Okay. Um, the problem with it was that she then goes on to basically, in that TV tropey way, lie and say she was cool with Maggie continuing to not want children when it was abundantly clear to everyone it's mm-hmm. not cool that you don't want babies. Mm-hmm. And, it's not cool. And now we know what is the thing that's going to break them up. Because, especially after, again, Supergirl doing such a good job of setting up this exit. Because. When my immediate thought, (laughs) as soon as Maggie had that whole confrontation with her father and then she's saying to Alex, you're the only family I need. I, my immediate thought was, what is going to break them up? (laughs) Like, like, what is it? Because I'm like, their relationship streams stronger than ever. And then when Alex hit her with the like, and maybe you'll want kids. I was like, oh, that's what's going to break them up. It's not going to end well. I was like, now I was like, aha, I've got it. <laughs> this is this is where we're at. Um, so I mean, we know where it's going, but you, it's it. Sometimes you're watching a show or you're reading a book, and you know exactly where the story is going, but they are keeping you engaged because of how they get there, and that's how I feel about this relationship. Yeah, I was nice to see um, Eliza. Mama Davis, I'm just going to mm-hmm. call her Mama I can never remember her actual name. I keep wanting to call her Car- Movie Cara, so. No, it is, it is Eliza. <laughs> it is Eliza, you're right. <laughs> or or Smallville Lara, because she played uh, Clark's mother on, Clark's birth mother on Smallville. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, she did. <laughs> okay. And Terrence Stamp played the voice of his father. Okay. And Terrence Stamp, for those of you who are familiar with the Christopher Reeve Superman, plays General Zod in Superman 2. Tom Welling is on Lucifer now. Oh, yes, he That's is. That's all I got. Yes, he <laughs> is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> which, oh, which, uh, which I cover for Project Fandom. So if anybody is watching Lucifer or wants to get caught up on Lucifer, please go to Project Fandom and read my reviews, my recaps of the show. Um, they are very detailed. 
<laughs> Message. Little, little plug there. Little Cross plug. promotion. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, um, any that you're, uh, you know, you're trying to like, find the scene. <laughs> up though, I did like Eliza. I mean, I mean, Eliza did that white woman judgy thing, but she wasn't wrong either. Mm-hmm. But she's like, the only thing terrible about that story is how your parents treat you. I'm like, okay, I get what you're saying, and while I agree, that's still her mom and daddy. <laughs> so I'm gonna need you to rein that in a little bit. My thing that was more kind of annoying to me, and I get why it was set up because obviously we needed to have the scene later with her dad where he pulls out the picture. But I'm like, why are you doing a thing at their wedding shower with all these pictures of Alex growing up? When you, to me, the minute she said she didn't have any pictures, yeah. That- it's time to pack that up and do something else. Yeah, like you need to find another activity. Like you have a, a conversation with Alex, and the, and the thing that was crazy is that her dad didn't decide to come until the last minute. So she still had this big ass poster board with pic- all these pictures of Alex and no pictures of Maggie on it. I mean, I could even see. I mean, once you figured out that there were no pictures of maggie as a child then what you do is you just make a poster board with pictures of them as adults Mm -hmm. that's true i mean it just it screamed it screamed oh oh, never mind let me stop it's it's that whole thing of like i want to do all these things because these are the traditional things that you know married couples get and then also on top of it i'm going to be extra because i'm trying to prove that like i'm totally okay with my daughter who just came out marrying the first chick she ever dated <laughs> like it's just it was she, being extra you know what's funny she did the same thing last season for valentine's day mm-hmm. maggie told her i don't like to celebrate it that is not me that's not who i am and alex pushed and did it anyway and pulled all this stuff together and maggie's like i don't like to do this i told you this i need you to listen to me and then capitulated because she's trying to compromise but i feel like now looking back Maggie's always the one that's been kind of compromising. I could see that. <sighs> anyway. And I think part of it is, I mean, even if you go back to the inception of their relationship, Maggie was kind of like, I don't feel comfortable being in this relationship because you're brand new, new to this. And, you know, I know how intense my first love, my first, you know, coming out love was. <laughs> And I I don't know if that's good. Like, like for me, I don't I don't know if I can handle that intense of a relationship. And Alex kind of pushed past through that as well. So, yeah. But back to Daddy Danvers. Oh, okay, so Daddy, Daddy Sawyer, long as shit. <laughs> But this speech, I'm like, oh, God, how can you be homophobic and right at the same fucking time? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, he was totally right on that racism. On that okay, system. so you ready? Because I finally found mm-hmm. it after fighting with the CW app for 25 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, hold on. You're just going to walk out after all this time, that's it? I can't do this. Can't do what? Tell me, please. Exactly, have I done that is so offensive to you? You spit in my face. I spit in your face for loving somebody. I, I can't. I don't understand. I. I don't get it. I came to this country at nine years old. At eleven, I was working in a factory. Yes, I know. Do you? Yeah. Do you know that I was the only Mexicano working alongside a bunch of white boys? Do you know that they would wait for me at night by the road? And laugh and call me wet back and kick me till my ribs were broken? What does this have to do with you being a lesbian? I worked to win their respect. Those same boys, when they grew up, elected me their sheriff. I endured for my children so that you would never have to face that kind of hatred, so that you would belong. I am accepted for who I am. The world is different now. Ha! They're building a wall to keep us out because in their minds, we're nothing but rapists and murderers. The only thing they hate more than a Mexicano is a homosexual. The world is not different, my dear. Look, you can live any way you please, but don't ask me to witness it. Okay, so here's the thing. It took me hearing that speech a second time to understand it. 
it's it's still homophobia, mm-hmm. but not your traditional homophobia. It's, Does that make sense? It's it's not. I don't think it's. I it's, think it's, I think it's, it's more it's, of a a fear. Yeah, it's more of a fear of it's the fear you have for your child. Exactly, and and that's what he was saying. I don't know that necessarily, and I wonder. He said you shame me, and I know that because. And now, in listening to it, I can't believe I'm trying to justify this. <laughs> but it, I'm wondering if he's thinking all these years ago when she was a child, when you know, how old is Maggie? Uh, how old is anybody on this show? I assume in her late twenties, early thirties. Early thirties. So when she was fourteen, that would have been sixteen years ago. That's two thousand one. I'm doing some math on some things. So that was just a few years after the Matthew Shepard incident. Mm-hmm. So Matthew Shepard was murdered in, I'm trying to pull it up, pull it up, pull it up, 1998. So when she came, kind of came out unexpectedly, this was only a few years after that incident. So, and it's, he's wrong as hell. It's still homophobic. It's still wrong. He is wrong as hell. Yeah. But I understand the fear. I think it's a combination of the fear and then you're talking about a man who immigrated, who went through hardship and basically, you know, fought because he had this image of what it was going to be like to be successful and accepted. Mm -hmm. And now and like when he's reached that status where he, you know, he is not being beat up for being Mexican and all that other stuff, then his daughter turns around and she's placed herself in a situation of being the other again. And not really placed herself in a situation. Well, that's how he sees it. That's who she is. Exactly. And that's how he, he sees it because like for a lot of people, you know, they still think it's, it's a choice. And if you have the choice, why would you choose more hardship? Instead of thinking, if it's a choice, indeed, why would you choose it? it? Apparently, it's not a choice because mm-hmm. no one would choose it. Exactly. <laughs> like, isn't that the the roundabout logic of it? Like <laughs> logic, it works both ways. <laughs> exactly. No one would choose this. No one would choose to lose federal protection for their marriage and other in their yeah. job and housing discrimination. Yeah. No one would choose it. That lets you know it's not a choice. Yeah. It, it's, it, it was a really interesting way and I think a far more nuanced writing than I expected from this show. Listen, when he said they building a wall to keep us out, if you think it's... D- when he all but said they think, think we're murderers and rapists, I was like... Oh. Oh, here we go. Make like, that so great Dax. again, guys. Make Basically, he all but said, and if you think it's different, you're dumber than I believed you to be. Because <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was, like, yeah. He was always like, if you think it's different, I have a, you know, bridge to sell you. <laughs> mm-hmm. I got a wall that's being built that I can <laughs> exactly. give you some stock in. Oh, yeah. I just feel like it was a well, I feel like that was better done than I actually it was much better done than I anticipated being. Mm-hmm. Um, and with the exception of the terrible Spanish, they had me crying. I'm like, everybody, I'm crying. I'm crying. And Maggie, I'm crying. I'm crying because as much as I hate that her father's being like this as a parent, I get it. It's mm-hmm. not something I could be. I'm like, OK, you're going to face this hardship. Let's figure out how we're going to face it together. I could never Never drop my child off. Well, not for this. I can never <laughs> drop my child off just because they discover their sexual orientation. Now, if they want to continue to act a fool, I can drop my child off real quick. That's all. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was just, I was really surprised by how, how, both how they set us up for the fall, just like Maggie, but also how nuanced the whole conversation was. Now, I will say the after school portion was her like, well, I just realized that I've been living in the body of this girl and I'm not that girl anymore. That was the after school special mm-hmm. portion because it's never that simple. Yeah. But, you know, that's I also mean, kind of how, like, I think there comes a moment in everybody's life um, when you realize that you 
it's it's either one or two things where you realize that a lot of the things that you've been doing are seeking approval from your parents Mm -hmm. and when you kind of come to the realization that you don't need their approval to be the person that you are um that shifts how you think and how you act um and then also realizing that you're parent is human and fallible is another big moment and I think she kind of had those moments right at like together at the same time it's like oh like you are not what I should aspire to be because you have a lot of flaws and and I can't keep because I I think even unconsciously she was kind of you know like he said when he asked her about the case that she solved and how she solved it. And she was like, well, I did what you always told me to do. So kind of unconsciously still trying to ha- have his approval and following the things that he told her. Um, I, can't, I can't believe we're having like such a ridiculously deep conversation about Supergirl <laughs> right now. Listen, and they said that the ratings had dropped. I need y'all to stop. <laughs> uh, y'all need to keep watching yeah I mean for two people who like I... cover this show we make a lot of we we also judge it harshly but when it's good we gonna say it's good right and we're not giving up on it I mean I'm still rather hurt but like I said I don't unless they fix this friendship I'm gonna forever be hurt with that was the only good thing to come out of CBS was the friendship between James and Karen. I'm so hurt, mm-hmm. but what else? But it's it's getting better. The even the guest stars are getting better. Carl Lumley, Carl, Carl Lumley. Lumley. Next week, Chad Lowe. Come on. Yeah, y'all, y'all need to get it together. Yeah. We are getting guest stars who can freaking act. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry that that. Came across a little shady. Yeah, no, no <laughs> bit, no bit. But no, you're. Sorry. But you are. You are right. Like they, they're, they're out here working. They're doing stuff, and I just feel like, yeah, we. I'm gonna give them credit where credit is due. And this week we didn't have anything with um, Samantha or with Lena. And I thought. You know, I would miss it because that was one of the things that we've complained about in the past is Mm -hmm. um, them kind of like being really into something and then it just going away for a while. (laughs) And you're like, is that? But it made their absence made sense with what was going on. Lena and Samantha are connected to Kara and Kara wasn't on Earth. Mm -hmm. And also, again, I didn't miss it. I, I, I was completely sold on the story they were giving us this week. And I wasn't like, when are we going to get back to what's going on with this? And, you know, I I was completely in it. So I was there for it. And now we have, I'm assuming Carl Lumley is going to stay for a while because John brought him back. So, so let's jump into this story (laughs) with great value. Lawrence. Um, Do you mean Lawrence from insecure? I'm so confused. Yes. Yes. He looks like Lawrence. He does not. So the actor, are you talking about the actor that played? Uh, uh, he looks like a sword around her face, Lawrence. You cannot convince me otherwise. Are you talking about the actor that played Talal? Yes. Okay, that actor, I love him. He, if you watch anything that is filmed in Canada, he is a staple of Canadian television. He was, um, or filmed in uh, Canada television. Uh, he was on Defiance. Uh, most recently he was on the last season of The Strain. Um, yeah, I love that actor. Uh, his real name. He's been on The Expanse too. His name is Duchesne Lewis, uh, Williams. Um, so he was very extra. Very extra. Like I said. Just, just <laughs> angry for no reason. Just <laughs> consistently angry. But also... I'm not gonna lie, David Hayward, when the scene first started and they were He was asking, a little over the top. He was over, he was the, over top. the top. You bring me here to you know, That's my father. That's my father. <laughs> oh my god. It's like, dude, like I need you to dial it back like so Can we talk about the fact also that um the opening speech is back and not only have they recast Allura, mm-hmm. they recast young 
Kara. Yes. Okay. That's so I was Kara. going to mention this because I was like, what? Hmm. Okay. I like the little girl that they cast. I've seen her in other stuff, but I really like the original young Kara. Yes. The original girl, she is on Netflix, uh, Lemony Snicket show. And I, 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 I love that little actress. One. Mm-hmm. I was watching- and they just did it this season because she was young Kara in the intro of last season. Mm-hmm. And they redid, I love the title card, but I, and I, I see they redid the speech where she's now Kara zor blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I saw that, I was like, no, what, the, why? Yeah. So the new actress, her name is Isabella Vidovic. And I know her from the Fosters most recently. Um, but she was also on that show about a boy and she's been in some other things. What did I see her in when she was like really young? Um, I don't know. She has a new movie coming out that's based on this book that I know the YA fans are into. Um, <laughs> oh, that's what it was. She was on The 100. As okay. Well. Um, but the other girl, her name is Melina Weissman. Uh, I, th- I also thought she, this, the original little girl, I thought she looked like very close to Melissa Benoist. She looked a lot more like a young yeah. Melissa Benoist than, yeah. I mean, is it, they're both beautiful girls. I'm sure they both can act, but the casting of the young, the, the one you just mentioned, she looked, a, she looked like she grew up to be care more than this new girl. <clears throat> Yeah, so I'm a little, yeah, I, I just realized that and I was a little salty. I was like, and and I feel bad because like I said, I, I do know the other little girl from stuff. So I know she can act and all that, but I don't know. She was so perfect. The original casting was so Especially perfect. Especially that episode in season one where we see her come into her power and save mm-hmm. the people on the bus. Come on. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so they're, they're, they're talking great value, Lawrence. Who Stop is calling him that? Special. He's not even that tall. He's actually pretty short. And lo- and when I think of Jay Ellis, Jay Ellis is like a giant. <laughs> this this dude is short. He does not remind me of Lawrence at all. Anyway, um, he's a, he was just being so extra. Like every single thing was um, what was it? Like every single thing was we just have to do it and you know we have to protect us and, da, da, da. and i'm and the other thing that was frustrating me about it is like he's have, he's like we have to do this to protect the resistance and to protect the white martians that are good and i'm like so there are literally two two whole two entire ass green martians left <laughs> because of all the stuff y'all have been doing and you're gonna kill one of them to get some information what kind of sense does that make? And that would be zero. And, and you're the good guy. <laughs> you, and you're doing it because you're the good guy. And they're looking for this magic, this religious artifact. I cannot pronounce the name. It's it's an artifact of the Green Martians religion. No, that um, can compel information out of the White Martians. And so the resistance fears if their enemies get a hold of it, that... Um, Basically, they'll be able to get all the names of the resistance fighters and they'll end the resistance before they get any further. So, Mind but the you only know, person when they do get the where staff, it, is, it, it doesn't seem to do that, it seems to just knock people out. But okay, well, no, it was influencing everyone, including the Green Martians. It was too powerful for anyone to wield except Kara. But, like, when she, I'm saying when she was wielding it, it wasn't like it was compelling people to do anything. When she was wielding it, it was literally disintegrating people, yes. Okay. Which I don't know why. I don't know why. Yeah. Anyway, and it was stuck in a rock like, you know, King Arthur's sword. So, <laughs> so extra. So extra. But I I like this little storyline because, mm-hmm. you know, you know, Papa Papa Jones wasn't having none of it. It's like y'all y'all trying to trick me. You ain't my son. My son wouldn't have run. And, <gasps> that hurt. That hurt. <laughs> I, I was like, Dang, I felt that one. <laughs> He's like, my son <laughs> would never have run. <laughs> and, it was like, and John's you face was like, 
like shit. You just felt the heartbreak for him though. It's just like, dang, dude, dang. And even with Kara, I mean, I appreciate it, Kara. Like, you know, I'm coming from a dead people, so I get it. I wouldn't believe him either. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, Kara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when he, when Papa Jones said, "I can't believe it's him," because if it, if I believe it, and it's not, and she's like, "It's like you lost him again, girl." I start bawling. I'm like, "Oh my god, it would be, and it would be terrible." And I, I, I love, I love that Car was like, "Read my mind." Who, like, who am I? Like, she, she took him through all the steps. Mm-hmm. She was like, she's like, I get it, I understand it. She's like, I'm the last of my kind too, and I get what it's like to think that you're the last of your kind. And I like that she didn't try and, because what I thought she was gonna say was, so how do you think your son feels being the last of his, thinking he was the last of his kind? And I was like, if she goes that way, he's just gonna be like, that ain't my son, so I don't really care. <laughs> But more than that, unlike seasons prior, she didn't take the situation and center herself. Mm-hmm. She used her experience to draw him out to a logical conclusion. I'm like, finally! <laughs> yeah. I mean, also, this never came up, but I was lightweight, like, McGon was a little shady too. That was a little white Martian in her coming out because she really got John there under false pretenses. Like she didn't tell him at all what the situation was. That and once it came out, I'm like, so can we even trust McGon at this point? Mm-hmm. That's where my mind went. And then can we talk about the fact that she had the nerve to fight as a green Martian? Like, bitch, you ain't green. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> Why? I was like, what's what's because I was like, is there a random green Martian in here? What's going on? <laughs> Is there a third? Yeah. yeah, it goes back to Clark on Smallville, but like everybody keeps saying I'm the last of my kind, but y'all fools keep showing up. Exactly. I'm like, it's another one. Maybe he's not the last of his kind after all. Oh uh, yeah, I was very much so confused by that for a second. I was well, I guess the only good thing about her fighting as a Green Martian is you could definitely tell because I do like that part where Car knocks out the White Martian and he's like, "How did you know what was me?" And she's like, "I didn't know it was you." <laughs> Like, I'm punching anybody coming at me. Exactly. She was like, I'm just hitting first. That's all I'm doing. Oh, it cracked me up, though, when the staff, like, activated. And then it, the w- evil white Martians start fighting. And she went to punch one of them. And you can see on her face, like, record scratch. <laughs> Let me tell you how this all began. Because she, she saw exactly where she messed up. Like, shit. Yeah, let me tell you how we got here. <laughs> I mean, overall, the fight was, like, your typical, like, Supergirl fights aliens. It was too short. It was kind of... Yeah. It was kind of meh. Yeah. But everything leading up to it was done really well, especially when John... When they finally convinced uh, Daddy Daddy Jones to open up and they yes. did memory. Yes! I'm, I was oh, just God. about to say <laughs> that! The memory... Okay. First of all, just beautifully acted i wonder who they got to play the daughters um under all that cgi um i can't find anything in the credit okay or maybe it was just all cgi i don't know but it was so adorable the way they were like you know like the granddad comes in and he's like he's like did you tell him did you tell him like you know like he doesn't know i'm here and like they're all excited and then when john comes in and he's all like he's like you guys kept a secret like it was oh my god i i glad they did them as martians but also in my mind i was just picturing black folks <laughs> like, <laughs> like that whole scene was just black folks and like Carl well, Lumley also given that all the like white martians we saw were black or brown folks i'm just saying <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, in in my mind i, I don't know i just I, all the martians are black basically but <laughs> um i still don't know how i feel about all the white martians being black as well I have a little issue with that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Carla Lee also has like a little Caribbean-ness to his voice as well. He just has this very like earthy, warm, silky voice. I just, I loved it. I thought it was so perfect. It, it made me feel like we were really on his home planet. We were really watching him at home. 
Can we talk about uh, John Jones' version of Lola? Oh. <laughs> Can we talk about that? So, the one thing... And can we talk about Ke- the fact that I'm like, Kara, how you... I- how are you going to torture them with Britney Spears? <laughs> this is my thing. When, when she rolled up, when I heard the music, I thought it was good because I was, in my mind, I was like, of course he's not going to let anybody but himself drive that car. So I was like, if they have David Harewood pull up in this car <laughs> blasting Britney Blast Spears, Spears, I am going to be I am angry. <laughs> I, I swear to God, I'm so glad they didn't do it. <laughs> but then, of course, like Kara rolls up, and I'm like, of course, Kara's basic ass. <laughs> uh, but it was really good. And then when she takes off after um, Papa Jones comes to Earth, he's like, can everybody do that? And John Sloan, just her. I was like, no, you can do it, and you can teach him to do it. Come on now, don't show yourself, yourself, son. Oh, so sweet. They know it's too special. That was your Supergirl cheesy moment of the week. <laughs> Loved it. Um, I'm over here shading Britney Spears, by the way. That I was, I was trying to convince everybody to go see Britney Spears in concert while we were in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> it was the liquor talking. No. It was before we started drinking. I love Burt Brett. <laughs> um, <laughs> See, I was trying to help you, but anyway. <laughs> I was trying to give you an help, but okay. It was so cheesy. Her in that Supergirl outfit, pull it up in that car with no uh, top down and, and playing Britney Spears. Oh my God. I swear sometimes. But so we've talked about this with um, The Flash and how they're getting lighter and everything. And. While Kara has had her dark moments with this whole trying to work through the Monel thing, mm-hmm. there is something very still light and bright about Supergirl that I like. Yeah. Like she's just like and this episode in particular, I think it was good for her to go to Mars. It was completely out of the space that she's used to. We didn't get any Monel stuff. And I don't know. She was just like happy. She was happy to be doing something and helping John for once. And I just, I really liked it. Yeah, I did too. It was a great episode and yeah, I liked it. All right. Um, anything else you want to add before we go to the comments? No. You ready? Yeah. <clears throat> Amani. Hey, buddy. Now this, now this was an episode. A and B plots were tight and overlapping and the director set everybody up with time to act their asses off. Yes, he or she did. I don't know who directed it. It was a dude. I almost... <laughs> hmm? I looked it up. It was a dude. <laughs> okay. I almost wish Supergirl wasn't in at all in it at all so we could have that uninterrupted black accent. I didn't mind her being there. <laughs> she did well. I was so glad to see Carl Lumley, the John Jones from the Justice League cartoons, and I forgot he did Mantis, giving David Harewood that much to work off of. He's so good when he gets to leave the DEO. Agent Coulson even let him borrow Lola for the weekend and make that intergalactic trip. I did not read any of this feedback before <laughs> I made my comments. I actually set this post up a week ago to post. I, I had that same... Um... Thing I was listening to Chris and Dee Palm's um, Inhumans review, mm-hmm. and I have been working on some Inhumans reviews for another site. And I was listening to theirs after I wrote mine, and I was like, "People are gonna think I listened to this and then wrote my review <laughs> <laughs> because I, everything they had an issue with was the exact same thing that I had an issue with." And I definitely side-eyed them le- leaning into Maggie's fake Latina roots, but she killed all of her scenes this week. Even her daddy, Tony Almeida, I guess that was his character on 24, mm-hmm. even got to be a complicated three-dimensional character while still being trashed for disowning his daughter. Yes. 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 <laughs> That's so what was so good about it. We're like, where, where is this writing? Who Who changed <laughs> in the writing room? Who did they add? <laughs> Come on with it. Those bars against 45 and growing up Mexican in America definitely landed. I'll take more of this show every week. Thanks, Imani. Sherrod B. Now, this is the Supergirl episode that was needed. I really didn't care for the Maggie Alex B plot, but it worked with the episode. Amazing what a beard will do. (laughs) 
Okay. <laughs> Forget Tony Almeida. <laughs> Y'all just won't call that man by his government name. Forget Tony Almeida was in this episode. I thought Kara would screw up the marriage, but it's going to be Maggie. Is it going to be Maggie? I feel like it's Alex. I feel um, like I think take- they're going to part amicably. <laughs> I feel like it's Alex. When I'm thinking back over their relationship, it's Alex. Anyway, love the scene. Love seeing Sharon as McGowan again. The scenes with John and his dad had me near tears. No, they had me in tears. Like I'm, I needed Kleenex. My face was wet. Oh God, I love seeing that episode. Really, was a John episode with Karen in the background. Hope we get another episode in Mars. Not sure how Arrowverse keep getting all these old TV stars for the shows. Didn't realize John Dad was Mantis or the voice of John in the DC animated universe. Thanks, Amani. A episode for me. A minus episode for me. Um, you know that's something that I think CW in general is really good at is casting what they call legacy characters. So Mm -hmm. just really reaching out to these actors and actresses who have touched the universe in some way and and casting them. I mean, think about it. The season one of The Flash, they had the TV Flash playing Barry's dad. Mm -hmm. And then they brought um, uh, McGee, what's her name? Uh, Yeah. Tina McGee, yep. they brought mm-hmm. her in, and she was his love interest on the Flash TV show. Um, Mark Hamill yeah. reprising his character from the TV show. Come on, Mark I think it's not. Just, <laughs> I think it's not just the being like reaching out to these actors who have touched the universe, but also casting them in the right role. That's what's yes. been so good to mm-hmm. watch. Is you know. I think Dean Cain is a perfect Papa Danvers. Yeah. He's so good. And, you know, Mama Danvers, they, they've they just casted it so well where you're like, oh, of course this person would be this person now, you know? Yeah. Ugh, yeah. I can't wait for whatever they figure out for Tom Welling to do. Because <laughs> it's going to happen. It better happen. Oh, let me stop. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> Joseph. Hey, Joseph. For, oh, and congratulations. He got cast in another um, play, I want to say. Mm-hmm. He's looking out. Now, he, look, we supposed to see him on one of these shows in a minute. Get that reel out there, sir. Anyway, um, first things first, it was nice to see my future ex wife back on the show. Why she got to be your ex? <laughs> you won't have to explain that, sir. Hey, Sharon. This was the best episode Supergirl has ever had. Both stories were on point. It was well written and well acted. The Black Dean on Mars was phenomenal. Seeing the OG Martian Manhunter on screen was great. And they even kept Kara li- likable for the most part. Props to Kara for giving the CW pep talk to John. That, <laughs> she you got, really has to lift those roles sometimes. <laughs> but and she got it out the way at the beginning of the episode. All righty then. <laughs> This show even made me feel sorry for the fake Latina. Her dad is a broken man and it showed that's what that's what I was having trouble saying. He is definitely broken. And it's not just because she came out of the closet. Yeah. He's been broken since he landed on these shores and was treated the way he was treated. Yeah. And he's never healed from it. Oh my God. So now I really want Maggie to stay just because they've developed her so well. <laughs> I know. That I even, like, I'm like, what's Maggie's dad up to? <laughs> like, I need to know more. <laughs> How do we get him out of the sunken place? Yeah. Anyway, I, you know, I keep using that reference. I've never seen that movie. I don't know what it means. So I'm going to stop using it. Anyway, the wedding shower was I, cute. I pause. Was- you have not seen the movie? The wedding shower was cute. <laughs> it's, it's out on DVD. I know, but I'm contrary. And everybody kept talking about it. And then suddenly I felt like I didn't need to see it because I got all the references, except I kind of don't. No. I will watch it. Oh, okay. <laughs> My brother bought it off of the Red Box. So I think I'll watch it when I go see him this week. Yeah. Um, the wedding shower was cute, but it was still a brutal end. Speaking of brutal endings, these two will not get married, so I hope the presents are only gift cards. 
<laughs> no, you need that's even worse than having to um to ask for them saved date cards back that I was <laughs> returning the presents afterwards. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's it for our feedback. Um, I just want to say we we had speculated some about who the Martian could be and all this other stuff. I was not expecting it to be Dad. I was not expecting it to be played by Carl Lumley. Mm-mm, <laughs> so not at all. They no. knocked it out of the park with this one. <laughs> I'm just sitting here all in awe. I'm just like, this is such a good day. Yeah, it was a great episode. It's definitely a repeater for me. I will definitely probably be watching it again after I get to the Midwest. I'm driving there tomorrow. Yeah. And then also just quick like now that I even think about it more because we keep talking about how the writing was so nuanced it's also two parallel stories about two different fathers yes far from the tree yeah good job good job Supergirl (laughs) good Good job job, Supergirl who knew you had it in you who knew (laughs) keep it up keep it who wrote this one (laughs) like like (laughs) I need you to write all the episodes <laughs> because this. Thank you, let's like that director. We can say we need you to you direct it like this every time. Yeah, every time, every time, like every time, this. every time we do it like this. Um, it was so written this was by written yeah. like Derek Simon and Jessica Queller. Jessica Queller's name, I know. She did nine episodes. She did Falling, which we liked mm-hmm. from season one, where Kara went bad. She I, did I, Better Angels, which we med on she did the first two of season two she did the medusa one mr and mrs mixel picnic and the season the penultimate in the season finale of season two yeah and it i also remember her from gossip girl because i remember on that show they used to always use they would use their staff's names sometimes for like random characters so i remember that the head mistress at the gossip girls school was um head mistress queller after her okay yeah and then derek has also oh oh he's story editor staff writer executive story editor on 40 episodes of supergirl Mm -hmm. and did graceland did some stuff on graceland but most of his work has been on supergirl Good job, you writing team. Y'all need to continue. We did, he did for the girl who has everything from season one, which we also liked. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not mad at you. Not mad at you. He, <laughs> I'm wondering if, like, uh, since he's done like so many episodes and he's like a staff writer and story editor, if he mostly like reads the scripts and like cleans them up. Good job, you. Good job, David. (laughs) Um, So that's it for this week's Supergirl. I'm really excited to see where it goes from here. If they can, you know, if they raise the bar and keep hitting it, I'm all for this season. And so far, it's working for me. Me too. So next week's episode is The Faithful. Again. And we get Samantha next week. And we get a uh, guest star, Chad Lowe, mm-hmm. who I enjoy. Um, Chad Lowe just be popping up out of nowhere. He was a he was a parent on uh, Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, it should be a good episode again next week if they keep it up. We're we're here all season, ready to go. And Absolutely. and you guys. You know, stop. I know we can we can shade Supergirl here on the podcast, but y'all need to go out and tell your friends to watch it. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I'm not saying this to shade the show because I, I watch the show and I like it. But some of y'all out here talking about how Inhumans is the bomb, but y'all out shading Supergirl. And I'm Listen. confused. I am confused. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying one is better than the other. But I'm, I say, I'm saying they are right around the same level of the inconsistency. Hell, so the hell you say? I think they're around the same level of inconsistency. No, man. Okay, if you're <laughs> talking about the one is Supergirl, maybe. 
Yeah, we're talking mm-hmm. current season of Supergirl ver- versus what is airing right now. But Supergirl is three seasons in. It should be better. It should be better no. written than in humans. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, uh, no. Somebody, I'm just gonna say to me, it's the same level of inconsistency. So I'm very surprised at the folks who are out here talking about some Supergirl is horrible. But you know. The the humans is humans great. my shit. <laughs> uh, and Crystal's non acting asses get all the way the hell out of here. See, I like Medusa, but that's yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that's another podcast. That's another podcast. <laughs> we'll have a guest on because I'm watching the show. Like I said, the show is watchable. It's something to I will watch it. I don't hate it, but I won't lie. If if it didn't have the Marvel name attached, maybe I wouldn't be as hard on it. And I think that's my issue. With that Marvel title, I expect you to bring it. And when your show is less compelling than Iron Fist, you have failed the city. Do you feel like it's less compelling than Iron Fist? Okay. We're not, we're not going into this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. At least Iron Fist has some strong supporting characters and an interesting with an interesting B storyline behind it. The Inhumans is all over the place, which is sad because I want anyone to be great. I want him to have a great show. And Ken Leung, I want him to have a great show. Mm-hmm. I love Ken Leung. Not in this role particularly, but I love him in general. Delaying. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so we will see you guys next week for season three, episode four. What's it called again? The Faithful. The Faithful. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.